Hello everyone, my name is Evo and welcome to Cooking with the Koyas. Today folks, we are going to make an amazing Italian style sourdough bread. In southern Italy, they love to use durum wheat semolina not only for their pizza making but also in their bread making. So I have incorporated durum wheat semolina into my recipe which I'd like to share with you right now. And by the way, if you don't have a sourdough starter, I've got a recipe for you and a video. I'll put a link in the description. It's so easy to make your own sourdough starter. Anyhow, let's get started right now. So simple ingredients, folks. What I have here is 200 grams of all-purpose flour. Try to get a high protein one, one that's best for, best for bread. Uh, 200 grams is about seven ounces. Okay, so we're gonna put that in. Now, I had mentioned durum wheat semolina. Right there, folks, durum wheat semolina, okay? It's yellow, and uh, I have it here. I measured out 250 grams. You could see the color there, difference between the semolina and the flour. This is gonna change the character of that bread completely to make it fantastic. So 250 grams, which is nine ounces of semolina. Uh, to that, we're gonna add 13 grams of salt. This is just regular table salt. 13 grams is about one and a half teaspoons. And then I have this diastatic malt powder. This is optional, but I strongly recommend it because this is a superfood for any kind of yeast. So we want to add one teaspoon of diastatic malt, which is equivalent to about four grams. Okay, so now that we have those ingredients, mix everything together. So we incorporate all those ingredients together. There we go. Now, our sourdough. As you can see, this one has doubled in size. It's an active sourdough and it's ready to go. Uh, I need my weigh scale because what we're gonna add, we're gonna add a lot of sourdough starter. That's another beauty with this recipe is it's not shy with the starter. And as you know, sourdough bread is very good for you. So the more starter we use, the better it is. And we are gonna add 400 grams of sourdough starter, which is about 14 ounces. Okay, so let's get that all in there. We're up to 340, 350, let's get it in there. It'll take most of it. I will be left with some, and that's fine because all you need is a very little to feed your starter and get another batch going. So let me get to 400. We are at 393. Working in grams, folks, is so much easier than working in ounces. If you haven't made the switch yet, I highly recommend it. <laughs> okay, let's see there. Ooh, we're at 404. Okay, a little too much. So I'm gonna have to remove a little. I like to be relatively accurate. Okay, 401, I guess I can live with that. All right, now, now that we have our starter, all our ingredients, all we have to do is add some water. So let me go get, I gotta get 235 grams of water. Uh, we're gonna use warm water, which is about eight and a quarter ounces. All righty, and in goes our 235 grams of water. Now you might be thinking, that's not a lot of water for that loaf of bread. But remember folks, that sourdough starter we put in, half of it is liquid. Right? So it's all a calculated theory here on this particular bread. So don't, don't give that a second thought. So what we do now is we're just going to mix everything together to form a dough. And yes, we're going to get our hands in there, but I like to start using a firm spatula. I love using firm spatulas, or you could use a wooden spoon as well. Okay, and you have to basically, you see there's some you might be able to see there's some flour there that hasn't been picked up yet. You need to incorporate all that flour into the dough. So I'm going to get in there with my hands. Okay, and start mixing. So basically, again, you want to pick up all that flour and start to squeeze the dough to incorporate everything together. Just basically, all you're doing is taking the dough and squeezing it. Okay, taking it and squeezing it. So work it around. I th there we go. I think I've picked up 
I've picked up all the flour now. So now what you want to do is just work it for, I'm going to say work it for up to two minutes just to get everything incorporated and a nice smooth forming dough. And as you do that, the dough is going to start to firm up. And what you can do is grab from the bottom and kind of fold it over. Grab from the bottom, fold it over, and mix. Okay, so I like to grab from the bottom and just fold it right over and mix. So it firms up very, very nicely. Okay, our two minutes is up. As usual, it's going to be really, really sticky. But the good news is it won't be as sticky when we're done. So... Let me just scrape this out. Okay, I'm just gonna scrape the edges down. There we go. Our dough is now ready for a rest. So we're gonna put a cover on our dough and it is going to rest now. Now, how long does it need to rest for? It has to double, so take a, take a, pay attention as to where it is now and we're gonna let this rest it could be anywhere from 10 to 14 hours. It depends on the temperature of your house and the strength of your sourdough starter. But as a general rule, at around 68 degree temperature, it's gonna take about 12 hours. So if you're a little warmer, maybe less. If you're a little cooler, a little more. So 12 hours, give or take. What we wanna see is this dough rise from here. It should rise to about the two, uh, two liter mark, which is also two quarts. <laughs> <laughs> so we're gonna let it rest and I like to do this uh, the night before so that way the next day uh, I could finish making the bread so right now it's gonna rest and we'll see you in about 12 hours give or take fast forward 12 hours let's check out our sourdough look at this folks right where it should be sitting right there at the two liter just above the two quart mark it's got some nice air bubbles in it as well so this dough is doing extremely well beautiful just what we want it to be okay so put that aside i've got here a bread bonnetone if you don't have a bread bonnetone you could use a bowl or for that matter you could even just use a, a cutting board but these bonnetones are not expensive and they are fantastic for proofing uh, proofing your breads. So all I'm doing here is I'm lining my uh, bonnetone with some whole wheat flour. I like to use whole wheat flour as opposed to regular flour because it's it's thicker. It's it's got more substance, and it really prevents your dough from sticking. And the bonnetone makes our bread rise very very nicely. So. Uh, it is completely covered with, in this case, it's completely covered with um, whole wheat flour. Okay, so we're going to put that aside. I've got a little bit of flour here on the surface, so that's great. Let's remove our dough. Look at this dough, folks. Beautiful sourdough. Okay, again, a spatula works really, really well. Slowly remove. Oh yeah. And you see how that dough firmed up, folks? It firmed up very, very nicely. Okay. Oh, a little bit of dough here. Let's get that all out. There we go. Perfect. Okay. So now, quite simply, we're going to do what's called a fourfold. We're going to shape this bread. So the fourfold is simple. You could put a little bit of flour on your hands if you like, but basically you're just gonna grab one end of the dough, lift, stretch, and fold it over. That's it. Grab the other end, same thing, lift, stretch, fold it over. Grab the back side, lift, stretch, fold, and then the other side, lift, stretch, fold. That's it. Now to shape this into a round, very simple. Put it upside down, seam side down, and then quite simply just cup your hands behind the bread and pull the bread towards you. Give it a turn, cup, and pull. Turn, cup, and pull. And what happens is it starts to form into a, a tighter ball. So you do that about, oh, six or seven times. Okay, there we go. We have a beautiful round 
dough right there. And we're going to put that round dough right in our bonnetone. Maybe a little bit of flour on top. Okay. And now, folks, again, it needs a rest. So, two hour rest. At the two hour mark, it goes in the oven. So that means at an hour and a half, we need to preheat our oven to 475. So let's give it a rest. Hour and a half mark, we preheat our oven. It's been one and a half hours, so it's time to preheat our oven. I have an empty Dutch oven here, which we are gonna put with the lid on into the oven to, to preheat as well. Now, if you don't have a Dutch oven, that's okay. Any oven container with a lid will do just fine. So we're gonna put this at 475 degrees Fahrenheit. And for those of you tuning in from overseas, that's about 246 degrees Celsius. So let's give it a 30 minute preheat. So our 30 minute preheat is now done. Very carefully, I'll take that Dutch oven out. Very, very hot. Okay, let's take a look at our dough. It has risen very nicely. It's filled that bonnetone up beautifully. Okay, so off goes the lid. Let's just, here we go. Okay, lid comes off. Now very carefully, I take the bread and it'll come out nicely because we put all that flour and into our Dutch oven it goes. Then with a bread lame, if you don't have a bread lame, you can just use a pair of scissors. You just need to score the top. I'm just gonna do three simple lines right across the top. This is gonna help it rise in the correct direction. And I go down about quarter inch or so. There we go, the lid goes back on. And let's put this back in the oven. So gloves back on. And with the lid on, folks, that you want the lid on, we're gonna put it back in the, the oven. There we go. And it's gonna bake in the oven with the lid on for 30 minutes. Now, the reason we want the lid on is because it retains all that moisture and humidity, and it's gonna really help form our bread very, very nicely. So again, if you don't have a Dutch oven, any container with the lid. All right, 30 minutes. It's been our 30 minutes, so time to take the lid off. Oh yeah, our bread's looking good, folks. Okay, the lid comes off and we're gonna continue to bake anywhere from 10 to 15 minutes, depending on your level of doneness. So in my case, it's in this oven, it's usually about 12 minutes. So we're gonna come back in 12 minutes and check it out. Our 12 minutes are up. Let's take a peek and see if it needs more time or not. I'm gonna give it another minute or two. I want my bread a little bit darker. So this one might actually go the full 15 minutes. We'll see how it goes, but let's give it at least another two minutes or so. Alrighty, let's take another look. We have gone the distance and see if we got a little more color we do okay you know what that's that is good enough let's shut it down i personally like my breads a little bit darker oh yeah and you could probably see maybe you could see right here a little bit of i'm gonna say black or darkness right there that's kind of how i like my breads just on the cusp of of being not burnt, but on the cusp. And let's take a look at the bottom. Oh yeah, see, to me that's absolutely perfect. That's the color I'm looking for, which I would have loved to have had on the top. But you know what, folks? That's a nice looking bread right there. I'll tell you that. So we're gonna put it down. It's nice and warm. It needs to rest. It's still forming, folks. The, the bread is still developing. The crust is still developing. And we're gonna let that rest for about an hour before we uh, tap into it. If you can't wait the hour, at least wait 30 minutes. But the longer you wait, the better it's going to be. So we're going to give it an hour and we're going to come back. And I am anxious to do the taste test. And we're going to cut it right open and we'll take a look at the inside. We'll check out the crust and, of course, the taste test. So that wonderful time has arrived. 
Our sourdough bread has been sitting patiently, patiently waiting, folks. There's another look at the bottom. Okay, that's exactly how I like it. Now, of course, it's still warm. It's been about an hour. Uh, let's give a cut right up the middle. Sounds nice. Oh, oh, <laughs> look at that, folks. Isn't that beautiful? What a nice loaf of bread right there. Oh my goodness. Okay, let's get into some cutting and some taste testing. I just had to get some olive oil, folks. Okay, yes, the crumb, the crumb, folks. Look at this crumb. Nice and airy, beautiful, beautiful crumb, nice crust, beautiful. Okay, so let me cut into this. Okay. This piece here, my absolute favorite. <laughs> we'll save that one for Laura. All right, let me get another piece going here. There we go. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful piece of bread right there, folks. Love the crust. Love the dough. Oh, love the taste. Mmm. Amazing bread, folks. Remember. Mmm. The flavor, the sourdough, the semolina. Hmm. Now, remember, more than half of this recipe consists of sourdough and semolina. Hence, the flavor of this bread being absolutely amazing. Look at that. The crumb. See, just the crumb. Hmm. Beautiful. How about a little bit? A little bit of olive oil. We're going to go real Italian style here, folks. Whoa. That's a bit much. Amazing bread, folks. Absolutely amazing. Sourdough bread made with semolina. Southern Italian, European style bread. Hmm. You saw how easy it was. To make folks very very easy to make you can make this recipe right in your own home in your own oven very very easily and I'll tell you what you'll be rewarded with an amazing an amazing loaf of bread folks wherever you're tuning in from I want to thank you for spending time in the kitchen with me today and as always folks until next time bon appetito really hope you give this bread a try I need to make a sandwich or a sandwich.